Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Cancer. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Cancer, I'm doing a reading with a blend of decks. You'll see a mix of several in your spread today. So we've got the lovers on the split and the two of swords at the bottom of the deck. So a lot of confusion or misunderstanding around this situation. It's got the six of swords and the six of wands right under that, which is talking about like it is moving towards the ideal position or the ideal arrangement. It's just that you're going through that um, that static realm at the moment. Okay, overall energy from what we've forgotten for Cancer. I mean, you're starting here. The first card on the table is the moon, which is telling me that you are not seeing clearly or I'll get into it in a moment. Okay, overall energy from what we've forgotten. Intention. So intention is everything. That's the interesting thing though, is that it feels to me like you're not sure what, you're not sure what is going on. So it's really hard to have a clear intention when everything is kind of like swirling around you. It seems like there's a lot happening. So with the intention card here, it could be that the all of the intentions all of the previously placed intentions may be being kind of cleared out or swept to the side or clarified maybe ultimately at the end of this process. So that in a 22 is the number here, but so the overall energy being intention, it's like this entire process is, is in order to clarify the intention or get an intention or like a, a message through to you to where it clicks. It clicks in and the full picture comes into view. Okay. Okay, so we're beginning with the moon and the two of swords. And you've are and you've got the two of swords here on the split too. So the moon and the two of swords. It's pointing back to, I think it was the Gemini reading actually, where there was a bit of a stumble while playing out kind of like hypothesis or timelines, trying to trial and error something was causing a bit of a stumble into this abstract realm. This could be the static realm actually with the tower, all this electricity coming next. It's got this very kind of like science mind, physics based, imagery around it with the static and the lightning and this tower card here. I can't pick the cards up today. That's frustrating. This tower card here, which was in one of the last readings as well, but actually talks about an opportunity beginning to come into form or present itself to you. But it's like it may take a while to notice it because there's all of this kind of swirling energy here with the moon. It Okay, it feels like you've ended up in a, a point in time that you're not sure what's going on. I mean, the moon is this dominant energy where it feels like you're underwater. And the sensation of being underwater, though it can be ideal and or soothing even in some situations, for you it's feeling like a lot of the input or a lot of the like a lot of your senses are muted because you're underwater, right? It really limits your perception. It kind of closes everything in on itself. But at the same time, it brings a lot into view or potentially it can, right? You got the Seven of Cups coming next. It's a really intriguing way of looking at the Seven of Cups today. It's almost as if being in this underwater moon position, it's giving you the ability to look kind of or maybe get a preview, but definitely see this from a different angle, these cups overturned, right? It's like you have to take a lot of time to go through each of these cups one by one. And then there's all of the complexity of how they relate to each other or don't. Do you choose more than one? Whatever. Right? So it's almost like it creates more questions than it answers. But there's something about your perspective here that's giving you this overview that I feel like has been coming up a lot recently. It's almost like this, like crashing through the ceiling. 
and having this whole other vantage point, it's like moving, I'm trying to feel which side of the equation you're on because it's like, if you're, if you're above the ceiling, kind of looking down at everything, that's one perspective. That's like this bird's eye view, which could be seen as a higher vantage point. This one is flipped. It's almost like the upside down, right? So it's giving you potentially, ultimately, a lot of information that you maybe didn't have access to before, but it can be very disorienting, at least until you get your footing here especially with this double tower and this abstraction with the two of swords. It's like the moment this occurs, it's all simultaneous, right? The moment this occurs, this fumble or this tripping point or trigger, somebody said something to you that kind of put, put you in a spin maybe with this lovers here. Your partner said something that was very disjointed, maybe but you find yourself in this moon energy, it can actually be so be beautiful and peaceful too though, if you just settle into it. There's so much information that can come to you. I've had this image of, of the surface of the water being like the keys of a piano and somebody tapping on the keys and that kind of sending information down to the depths. It's like almost like this fish, fishing expedition and you're, in a sense, you're the fish down here at the bottom, which brings in the whole idea of alien. Alien can just be, of course, foreign and unusual or unexpected or unknown. So you're in this deep kind of, in this deep, maybe contemplative, it's like you're sorting, you're trying to sort it all out. This Two of Swords talks about, well, feeling really separate from what it is that you've known, because it feels like that everything is suddenly abstract and lines of communication are really cluttered. It's like you're speaking different languages now where once you were so united, right? But here you are kind of seeing the undersides of things. And that could also be talking about the thought behind the thought, which is really valuable information or a really valuable place to be because, because it ties back to intention. It's like, what, what is the intention behind all of this? It's interesting how this tower and this intention card are very similar which th this one looks to me like a lock that's being opened. The intentions are being examined from different perspectives, seeing the underbelly, which is the part that very rarely gets exposed. Interesting, the underbelly could also be like this card here with the muse of emotions. It talks about that back-to-back -back connection. This is that ultimate connection that is like no other, right? It's like your inner realms are merged, you're one, expression really and then I'm seeing the elephant there in that today which is bringing in memory there has been a lot of mention of deja vu in the readings this week so it could be partly that it's like deja vu is the ladder from which you climb back out of this deep subconscious place that that the tower placed you in I believe I believe the tower is what put you there, though it's one of those like chicken and egg, which came first. It's all happening so fast, maybe, or it feels that way to you because it's all new or it's all unknown, or it's like a, it's a new experience, this kind of undercarriage, underbelly type of thing. It's giving you a lot of new information. But it's also giving you this opportunity with the second tower card there, maybe to climb that ladder of memory or remembrance or recognition back to the surface. It's, it's teaching you a process, perhaps. You got the three of swords in the page, three of swords and page of wands next, which was looking to me like a really powerful breakthrough, right? Because it's like you suddenly realize you're suddenly acutely aware of the discomfort that this position or this situation is putting you in. And it's when that comes into view, there's been a lot of like everything clicking into place, seeing the bigger picture. It suddenly makes so much sense, right? With this lightning bolt, you go from this pure abstraction and confusion or things yet to be formed into this tower card here where it's almost like everything suddenly comes to life with this lightning bolt epiphany. It makes so much more sense now. All you have to do is remove the splinter, remove the, the, the cause, whatever it is that is 
hurting you is easily removed and tossed away is what it looks like with that page of wands. But what's interesting is this Knight of Cups is coming next to it. And it's almost like this boomerang effect. When you set this into motion, it very quickly either comes back to you or perhaps to somebody else. Because you got the Six of Cups here and the Lovers and the King of Cups all showing themselves here. Which could be part of this kind of hypothesis playing out. Which one of these, if any, that's where all that Seven of Cups, like considering all of your options, which one of these, if any, is this? Trying to identify the back-to-back -back connection. It's interesting is there's a, I'm just noticing the ladders, right? This back-to-back -back connection somehow maybe has something to do with the spine or like Kundalini energy, but it's talking about this ladder. And on the way up this ladder, it's like, oh, this here is, is a blockage or, or a, um, a wounding point, an injury point. This is a discomfort point and we can just remove it. Losing like one rung of the ladder is ultimately not catastrophic. And it just comes back anyway. It's almost like it comes back refined or purified because it's coming back as this messenger, emotional messenger. It's coming back with a lot of emotion and the Six of Cups, right? That's got that, that boomerang type thing in it too with all this memory bridging from the past. So it's as if you're beginning this reading almost in this kind of like timeline tailspin. But once you kind of bump up against the bottom, maybe that's rock bottom. It's like you get catapulted back up again by remembering or getting a glimpse of. That's the thing too with the piano keys on the surface of the water. That's this happening here, right? It's like whoever this is, they're kind of going through, they're going through it going through their options or like really going through it, right? And as they touch on each of these energies, it's sending you information in the depths. You see what I mean? It's, re it's reaching you. It's reaching you and it's reminding you of this because it is this. So it's presenting this back-to-back -back connection to you, but it's also kind of in a sense, almost building this ladder for you or with you. And when you begin to ascend this ladder, you get you you stumble upon or become aware of one of the rungs that needs to be removed. Luckily, it's only one rung. All the odds are in your favor in a sense. All of the energy is going upward. So there's no threat of you being kind of pulled through that gap in a sense. So maybe you want to linger there for a moment in order to really absorb this Six of Cups energy. It's like there's a lot here to take with you that maybe is being kind of picked up in that spot. If that makes sense or integrated, maybe that's where it's being integrated. But interestingly, the hanged one and the devil are coming next after the six of cups, but ultimately leading to the king of cups. So it's like this in-between place or maybe it's that upside down place. It is underneath the seven cups, right? Underneath the seven cups is this hanged man and the devil, which feels like an active blockage in the path or realization of this king of cups, which I want to say, interestingly, when you get to the end here, when you finally reach this king of cups, he's beyond the tower. He's beyond the devil. He's been there for a significant amount of time or a version of him. I mean, this could be a vision of the future. It's something that is ultimately going to be actualized. But you're arriving there, whether you're arriving there first, it's guaranteed to occur. He's been sitting, it's like he's been waiting there for a long time. Being this light reflection through the water, in a sense, through the tower, through the devil, because there's this, because of the back-to-back -back connection, right? It's like, it's all connected you're connected but it's almost as if you're needing you need the tower or something really big to almost force you to focus here is what it feels like right it's got that feeling of you know like mothers who lift cars off of babies if that's ever actually happened or kind of like superpowers being activated in a crisis moment 
not that this is like a heightened crisis moment. It just feels disorienting, right? It's like you're doing something and then in the next moment you're underwater with the moon and you're watching all of this occurring on the surface with the tower and the seven of cups. It's like so much is happening up on the surface, but you're having to be here in this position in order to kind of take in the bigger picture. And starting to get a glimpse of or understanding of this Knight of Cups, which I believe is the lover. It's all connected. That's the thing. It's like, it's like putting together all of these seven cups is presenting to you the image of the lovers, the six of cups and the king of cups. That's what all those cups under, that's what's under all the cups, essentially. And it's like perhaps the whole reason that you've arrived here is because of an earlier intention that you set to sort this out or to understand it. It's like you ultimately maybe set this into motion. It doesn't really matter though. It's not the important message here. The important message is kind of like this rediscovery <clears throat> of your spine in a sense, which is the ladder, which is the ascension process, which is sorting all of this out. Interesting though, going back to this, Perhaps some of you are having some serious back problems, right? With this Three of Swords. <clears throat> I know it's pointing to the heart, of course, but I mean, she does have her hands on her lower back there. You know, almost like something has gone off with the spine, which of course, even if it's just one particular point on the spine, it can change everything, especially when it's resolved, right? When you pull that out or you correct that issue, it's like utter relief rushing in. That could be what this hanged one and the devil were representing is whatever that kind of splinter energy is. Splinter also meaning talking about maybe splitting. Splitting or getting between this connection here, which is ultimately not sustainable. It will always come back together. It's like it's always stitching itself back together. If that makes sense. That's why it's kind of like ultimately guaranteed to come back together or be resolved. It would be better, it would be best if these energies didn't get stitched into the mix. This is suddenly looking like a thread, right? You don't want to stitch those energies into the mix. It could be the reason why you chose ultimately on some level to take this plunge into the depths of the subconscious, into the depths of the water in order to come back up that spine and discover where the splinter is so that it can be quickly and easily removed and exchanged in a sense it exchanged for what's under the cups right all of that emotional communication coming from this lovers the king of cups you see what I mean it's like it's like he's been sending his bat signal out to you all of this time and it's finally reaching you it's that light through reflecting through the water it's been coming up in a couple of readings now because of that beautiful vision that I had where I was at the bottom of the water you know it's like laying at the bottom of the lake so peaceful actually but also this kind of growing urgency at wanting to communicate to the one on the surface who is seeking right it's very much this energy here tapping on tapping on each of the options and in doing that it's kind of sending a signal into the depths and from down in the depths you're saying i'm here i'm here look no farther in a sense but there the communication is only going one way right because of the limited the, the limitations of the water realm it puts up more resistance. It's putting maybe the devil and the tower in between you, perhaps. But so there's this message of the communication is only going one way. If you want to rise up, which you do ultimately climb back up this ladder or send back up this ladder and fixing what is broken on the way, it has to come from them. It's almost maybe as if they're pulling you up, right? Because it's their subconscious. You're in the depths of their subconscious in order for you to come to the surface or come into their conscious awareness. It has to come from them. The intention must be set by them. But because there's such a profound connection here, you can have an impact, right? I mean, maybe it's pulling this splinter. The splinter just being whatever it is that's kind of like, it's the, it's the target, right? It's the sore spot. 
It's the thing that wants to be avoided. Could be right, everything's going round and round because it's like, let's do everything except for this. Let's talk about everything except for this. But once it's liberated, once it's removed, it quickly comes back together because the King of Swords, the King of Cups has been waiting there all of this time. Does it make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna continue to pull cards, create an extended. Oh, that's interesting though, because these cards are coming up. Are they part of your reading? The Knight of Pentacles and the Nine of Wands. This is the this is the tough love guide, but it almost looks like she's being proposed to by this one here. Is it this Knight of Cups, or sorry, this King of Cups here? Now that the pathway is cleared, there's definitely like a confession or something that's coming here. And this one, this Nine of Wands is just saying, don't take things at face value, perhaps. It's like you've arrived powerfully in this, in this current moment, which feels like it's almost like everything is in the balance. Everything is on the table with this Wheel of Fortune here. It's like the next step is going to change everything and you're ultimately in control. You've arrived there in that position. But just be cautious. Perhaps we'll get farther into it in the extended. I'm going to pull cards and create an extended if you're interested in that. Link is in the description, and if not, I will see you next time, Cancer. Thanks, bye.